Hey everybody! It's been a while since the last studio vlog. Three years and five months to be specific. As you can see, I've built and moved to a new studio since then. More on that coming soon in another episode. Hopefully, that doesn't take another three years though. For this episode, I want to give you some insight how I produced Atlas, show you the logic session and some tools I used for the sound design, since I still get asked a lot about that. So let's dive into the session. Keep in mind, this track is now 7 years old and a lot of plugins used are slightly outdated and might not work correctly anymore. Also I've learned a lot since then and there is stuff I wouldn't do like this today of course. But anyways, let's start. So here it is, less than 40 tracks, pretty simple. So let's start where I started. With almost all of my tracks, I write a melody and a theme on the piano first. To support that, I often create a simple pad sound, which loops and then I play over it until I get something I like. So here's the pad I used to write Atlas, and it actually stayed in the track. You might recognize it. That pad is basically just a piano sound run through um, Logic Space Design Reverb. If I turn off the reverb, it sounds like this. And if I turn it on, the dry signal is muted, it sounds like this. I didn't have my real piano back then and I used a plugin called Giant from Native Instruments. I still love how this plugin sounds, and um, if you adjust the tone, you can get a really soft and mellow sound out of it. I also pulled back the dynamic range so it gets really compressed. There is also a reverb on the sound and um, I EQ'd out some resonant frequencies and some of the mids because it got muddy there. When working further on the track I bounced down the pad sound to audio so I could easily cut it and remove it where it isn't needed and uh, that's actually this track here. For the piano melody, um, I think I already did a tutorial some years ago and um, there is also sheet music. It's nothing complicated and I think you all know it. And for the beginning, it's really just this pad sound and the piano. If we move on, there are more elements coming in. There is a sub bass, which I think, yes, it's a diva, which is a, an awesome soft synth still today. And um, I often use it when I want to have something a bit vintage sounding. Um, there's also a super saw. And this is silent one, which uh, back then I always used for super saws. It's nothing complicated, just saw wave oscillators. 8, 16, another 8, and some noise. And it's filtered down here. Another element coming in here is the guitar. I 
and um, this is just Guitaric, which is an amp simulator. I think there is a newer version out now with um, some reverb before the amp and some delay. And um, what I did is I played the guitar. I grab one here. I think I played this with my fingers. So you can hear, if I get a bit louder, it gets a bit crunchy. And uh, yeah, I think this is a, an important part. So for the build up, just before the drop, um, the bass actually filters out and the resonance is, is um, pretty high. So it gets really aggressive. It's just building up tension. And there is another guitar coming in. which is actually the decay from a guitar sound um, in the main drop, which I'll cover in a second. Then everything cuts out and this little piano melody comes. And then the drop starts. And here we have the same super saw, but now it's not filtered down, it's uh, really bright. The compressor on this is actually sidechained by um, this MIDI track up here which is just a little click and every MIDI note on here just triggers the sidechain. It's mostly on the on the downbeat but I think back here it gets a bit more complex. You can hear that. Yeah so that track is for it's just for sidechaining stuff. It's also in the bass which is here. We have like a, a really aggressive bass sound. which basically is silent. If you turn off the effects, it's a pretty uh, simple sound. The first plugin here is actually again guitaric, which splits the signal in two, left and right. And on each side, there is a lot of distortion and also octaver. So if you turn this on, it gets really big. And um, there is different distortion um, for the left and right channel, so it gets this really wide stereo image. There is also some EQing and um, the compressor for sidechaining on there. And there is also a sub bass. which is just uh, to give it a clean fundamental base. Another track is uh, this guitar layer and it's really important to the sound. Let's hear if, what happens if we add this. So that's really defining for, for this sound. And um, it's pretty cut up, so it doesn't um, fill the breaks. But um, let's copy it quickly so we can hear it, what it sounds without the breaks.
this is actually bounced to audio as well. So the distortion and all the amp simulation is already baked in here. But I think I have... Yeah, here we go. That's actually the guitar sound I used for this. So it's again guitar rig. A big reverb into distortion and an amp and some delay. And um, also essential for this sound is how I played it. So let me grab the guitar again. So this one was actually played with a pick and um, with tremolo picking. So it's really fast picking and it sounds like a pad with all this reverb and delay. And so on. This technique is also used uh, in a lot of post-rock tracks, so I really love it. It's almost in, it's sometimes hidden, but it's all, almost in all of my songs. So what else do we have? Um, of course, all the sound design stuff. Um, we'll do that in a minute. Um, the drums. That's nothing too special. It's, um, I used Ultra Beat, which I don't use anymore. Nowadays I use Battery, it's much easier to use. Um, but let's solo this. So as you can hear, it's nothing too special sound-wise. Uh, just a kick and some snares layered. But there are also those glitchy snares, which aren't too apparent if you listen to the whole mix, but I kind of like them. There is also a hi-hat loop, which I just threw over it. I thought that I am gonna use it as a placeholder, but it stayed in the track as it happens often. Yeah, that's it for the drums. In that second part, the piano comes back in. It's uh, the giant again. But this time, the tone is uh, a bit less soft, so it cuts through the mix. There is also some um, a reverby clap coming in, which is just a clap sample with a lot of reverb and um, also some noise, which is also sidechained. Yeah, and that's just noise with the filter slowly closing. There are also some strings coming in here. Yeah, they work in the mix, but solo they sound a bit underwhelming. I'm not sure what they use for this. Uh, it's Session Strings Pro. Yeah, I think it was included with uh, Complete back then. So apart from all this sound design stuff here, which I'll cover in a minute, um, that's it for this part. Um, and it goes back to the piano part. I 
again the piano part. And here I also covered the melody um, with the guitar. And I think that was also played with the fingers. And same thing again. Um, super saw and the uh, sub bass comes in. There's also some filter drums with delay on it. Some strings again. Again, session strings. And here the bass is decaying again and um, I think for this build up the delay on the drums is automated. Yeah, the feedback is uh, going up. So it rings out and yeah, give some tension to it. And then we have um, the main part again, um, which is pretty much, except for some different breaks, is the same thing, same elements. Um, yeah. And in the end, again, the piano part with the pad and the guitar. Yeah, that's it. So what's left is uh, the sound design, aka spaceship effects or whatever it's, it's been called many things. Um, and it's actually those tracks here, which are logic samplers. I used logic nine, I think for, for this track and it was still called EXS24 back then, but it's just logic's internal sample. And um, if we solo these, it sounds like this. And basically, those samples are just filled with slices um, of random sounds. So basically, uh, it's just one long audio file of random bass sounds um, sliced up onto the keys so you see it's playing just uh, always a different part of, of this source file basically all of those tracks are the same sampler but pitched differently and also some of them have effects on it for example this one has um, has this kind of tremolo on it. It's just, um, this is actually a filter by a um, company called Sugar Bytes. And it's, it's just the volume automated really quick, as you can see. So it gives, gives this kind of a tremolo. And um, if you run the track, you can see the speed of the, mod of the, you can see the speed of, of the audio modulation is actually modulated as well. So, So that gives this a uh, fluttering effect. So let's quickly build one of these sound design samplers. I always do this outside the actual project in a new project. As a source, you can anything you want, vocoders, synths. For Atlas, I think I used a reactor patch called Scanner XT, which is a granular synth. I love using granular synth for this since they have a organic quality to the sound and um, there's also kind of a randomness which I like. 
So let's open this up and uh, route it to a bus so we can record it. So first, load reactor. And then load up scanner XT. Here we are. So now let's route it to a bus. Just take one of these. Disable the output so we don't hear it double. Create a new audio track. And set the input to this bus. And uh, make it stereo. Set to record and input monitoring. Here we go. So now we can record the audio output while messing around in this synth. Um, for Scanner XT, one really quick way to get weird sounds is to use the preset morpher. It actually has another view, which gives you control of all the, all the parameters. And um, the preset morpher just morphs all these settings between the different presets. So um, if you enable it, we have this preset. Set the speed higher, and then we have this preset. And if we do this slow and play while morphing the preset, it gets really weird. So as you can hear, um, it gets really spaced out really quick, even with uh, a pretty underwhelming sample. So let's record something. For um, recording, I often do it, I often concentrate on one note. So um, I can put it in a sampler and then pitch it. So um, yeah, let's go. Let's hit record. Um, we don't need a click for that. And, um, yeah, let's go. So as you can see, you can really get lost into this. So I think we have enough. So now we have an audio file with just random sound design stuff in it. So you just could cut this up and use it in your project or um, as I like to do is put it in a sampler. And um, in Logic, there is a really easy way to do this. You could go now through this whole thing and um, cut where you think it's interesting, but you also can do it quite randomly by slicing it into even parts. Let's do this quickly. So here we go. Maybe, yeah, let, let's try. Let's see what happens. So you go to convert and convert to new sampler track. You want to have it zones created from the regions, a new sampler. And then, yeah, looks good. Go. And now. You have your own sound design sampler instrument. You can then pitch it. Or play with the other parameters of the sampler, for example, the attack time. So that's it for the sampler. And you can just use any source you want. You can use uh, synths, vocoders, or you could even use um, some external hardware like a analog synthesizer or some modular gear or guitar effect pedals. I think it's just a, a really cool way to sound design and then have it at your fingertips. 
So I think that's all there is to it. I hope I didn't forget anything, otherwise just let me know in the comments. Also let me know if this was interesting and if there's another track where you would like to check out the session. Thank you for watching and see you in three years.